In this video, I will teach you about one of the most fundamental concepts in classical mechanics, an inertial frame of reference. I will explain exactly what it is and how it is intimately tied to Newton's first law of motion. We'll get started with its definition. A common definition that is used in textbooks is that an inertial frame is a reference frame that is at rest or moving with constant velocity. Now this definition might seem clear at first sight, but there's actually a surprisingly subtle difficulty with it. The difficulty arises when one asks a very simple question. What exactly do we mean here by something being at rest or moving? One answer to this question is to say that motion is relative. So for example, if we have two particles, let's call them alpha and beta, we could say that alpha is at rest relative to beta if the distance between them is not changing. However, if the distance is changing, then we say that alpha is moving relative to beta. The situation becomes much more interesting, however, when we add a third particle. Let's call it gamma. And we'll suppose that both gamma and alpha are orbiting around beta with the same velocity. Now if we ask the question, is alpha at rest or in motion, what is the answer? Well, it depends. Relative to beta, alpha is moving. But relative to gamma, alpha is at rest. Here's where I want to mention Newton's first law of motion and how it connects to this. The first law says that for an object that experiences no force, if it is at rest, then it will remain at rest. Or if it is moving, then it will continue moving at the same speed and in a straight line. Notice how Newton does not mention motion relative to anything here. He simply talks about an object being at rest or moving. In fact, in his famous work, The Principia, he referred to it as absolute or true motion. Now I'd like you to sit back and just think about this for a moment. Could absolute or true motion actually exist? Imagine being in empty space with no objects around you. Would it even be possible to tell if you were moving? If there was no reference point whatsoever that you could compare to, could you actually know if you were ever truly at rest or in motion? And if you could, how? By what means would you know this? This is the incredibly subtle difficulty with trying to actually define an inertial reference frame. In order to talk about the motion of an object alpha, we always need to have another object beta. This second object can then be used as a reference point to be able to say if alpha is at rest or moving with respect to it. And if we want to use Newton's first law of motion and speak objectively about this type of motion, then it seems that we would need to find an object beta that is truly at rest, something that could provide a true rest frame. But there are no such objects that exist. For example, in intro physics classes, the reference frame of the Earth is to a good approximation a rest frame. And this works when trying to solve certain problems. But it quickly fails if we want to describe things like the Earth's rotation or movement around the Sun. For this, we need to have another reference point or rest frame. You could perhaps choose the Sun. But the same difficulty applies. The Sun is not truly at rest. It is moving around the giant black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy. This is why in certain textbooks, you might see another definition of an inertial frame of reference as something that is not rotating or accelerating with respect to the fixed stars. But even this is imperfect, since the fixed stars also move around the center of the galaxy, while the galaxy collectively moves towards the nearest neighbor galaxy, Andromeda. So what is the solution here? There are actually no simple solutions available. Isaac Newton saw this problem when he was formulating classical mechanics and thought that the only solution was to posit the existence of absolute space. According to Newton, the one thing that is truly at rest is absolute space, and all motion should be conceived as motion relative to it. And although we can't see absolute space, Newton gave some very interesting arguments as to why he thinks we must posit it in order to make any sense of motion. Unsurprisingly, most physicists do not find his arguments compelling, and the situation only becomes more difficult when considering the development of Einstein's relativity theory. There are even more subtleties I could go into, but instead, I'll end by giving you a working definition. For the purposes of studying or actually doing classical Newtonian mechanics, the most useful and commonly accepted definition of an inertial frame of reference is to just say that it is one in which Newton's first law of motion holds. Although this may sound hopelessly circular, it is actually very useful and works in a large number of circumstances. As long as you know all the forces that are acting, you can always determine whether or not you are in an inertial frame. So if you ever find yourself wondering whether you are actually in one, just simply throw a ball. 
If it moves with constant speed and in a straight line, then you are in an inertial frame of reference. If not, then you must be in a non-inertial frame, which will be the topic of the next video in this playlist.